Consumer Credit Protection Act, CCPA of 1968, restricts the amount of garnishments and protects job. From a human resources perspective, Title III of the Consumer Credit Protection Act, CCPA of 1968, limits the amount of wages which can be garnished in a week and protects an employee whose wages have been garnished from being fired. However, if an employee has had two or more separate wage garnishments, an employee, the employer can let the employee go. The limit of the law for wage garnishments is the lesser of 25% of disposable earnings or the amount which disposable earnings are above 30 times the federal minimum hourly wage, which is $7.25 per hour or $217.50 per week. Example, weekly disposable earnings pay $825. 25% is $206.25, and the amount above $217.50 is $607.50. Since 206.25, $206.25, is the lesser of the two amounts, then the maximum garnishment is the $206.25. Disposable earnings are the amount at, after required deductions like taxes, social security, unemployment, etc. In the case of court orders for child support and alimony, Title III allows up to 50% of the employee's disposable earnings if the employee is supporting a current spouse or child and up to 60% of the employee is not doing so. 5% more may be garnished for child support payments over 12 weeks in arrears. The Consumer Credit Protection Act, CCPA of 1968, limits the amount of allowable garnished wages and provides job protection. Multiple choice question, Consumer Credit Protection Act, CCPA of 1968. A. Wages of deadbeat dads may be garnished up to 100%. B. Restricts the amount of garnishments and protects job. C. Burden of collected back payments falls on employer. D. Employers own the work product of employees. Well, in this case, the best answer choice for Consumer Credit Protection Act, uh, CCPA of 1968, from what we've been given is B as in boy, restricts the amount of garnishments and protects job.